What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're back with some more Botchamania 453, man. This should be a good one. You already know. Y'all know I love me some Botchamania. Love checking out their videos. It's always funny. And they always have like some interesting like little backstories when they do like little readings from like different wrestler books and stuff like that. And the memes from Botchamania are also plentiful, also great. They're gonna check this out. Appreciate all the love and support. You guys been blowing me up on Instagram and Twitter. Gotta check out the latest Botchamania. That's what I'm here to do for you guys. Let's get right into this one. Make sure you hit the like button. Roll to 90K. Let's get right into this. Hey, I'm Terrence Terrell. One time longest reigning impact women's champion. It's been beaten, but we don't want to talk about control it. Okay. Anyway, if you like incepted commentary, botches, and video game references, be sure to watch Botchamania. Oh, but also make sure and watch the Lock Up Podcast. And you can find us at Lock Up Podcast on Instagram. What the hell? <laughs> I love this intro. It's always well, different I have a every long time. History with the dunk. For those who know about Botchmania or any of these stories, I, the, people just look it up. Cody Rhodes, the dunk. I had one of the worst matches of all time. It's, the worst oh, wow. match I ever had in my entire life. So we go out, and this is pre-Yes Movement, Daniel Bryan, and uh, the original Sin Cara, and Ezekiel Jackson against myself, Ted DiBiase Jr., and Wade Barrett. At one point, Ezekiel Jackson is supposed to be the hero of this match. He's not even getting in until he gets that tag, that moment. He's going to be the hero of this city, basically. He's just going to light it up. But unfortunately, Ted DiBiase Jr., didn't kick out. Oh. Daniel Bryan comes in, shoots him to the corner, does the little drop kick in the corner. One, two, three. Oh. And we're like four minutes into this match. Oh. <laughs> it's a two segment match. Oh, so no. I, th I think, oh, I got a little experience at this moment. I'm going to make an audible. I look to tell Wade. Well, let's just jump him. That's what I'm going to tell him. <laughs> Cody, that's real. <laughs> that's real. That's that's a good audible. Let's just jump him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And from what I know, the referees are supposed to call it straight. They're supposed to call the matches straight down the middle. It's, it's like, you know, they got to call it legit. If something happens and the person doesn't kick out, they're supposed to call it legit. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but they're supposed to be like, one, two, three, you didn't kick out, I have to call it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it was interesting. A lot of people felt some type of way with the whole Roman Reigns, uh, last man standing. Uh, he didn't technically make the 10 count. They didn't call it legit. They should have, but they couldn't because of the, the title. His title reign would have been screwed up, so. But as I turn, Wade is already up the ramp. Oh, no. He's, fur he's furious. But I will never forget for the rest of my life what happened next because we come into the grill area and there is Vince oh, no. standing up, headset off. Oh. And right before he can say anything to me, Ted Jr. blows by me. No fear looks at Vince and says, where is that referee? He was trying to fuck on me. <laughs> and because it was such an awkward, <laughs> unbelievable moment and an incorrect use of the F word and everything that goes into it, Vince just real slowly put his headset back on, <laughs> sat down, <laughs> and we never talked about the worst match that happened ever again. That's funny. <laughs> Even Vince could, he's just like, 
Let's continue on with the show. <laughs> oh, she that got redhead clocked. just took one in the head. Back and to the left. Collins maintains control. His confidence continues to grow in the process. Cody Rhodes, we forget because of WrestleMania, he was away from the WWE for six years. That was his first match back. It takes a while to get rid of. And I called this when they said this shit. I was like, bro, he was just a. That don't mean he didn't wrestle for fucking six years. He was just in AEW five months prior. What the hell are we talking about? <laughs> Ring rust. We haven't talked about that enough when it comes to Cody Rhodes. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> you would think the odds of her ever mumbling the words, I quit, would be longer than Dick Strike had yesterday at the Kentucky Derby, but she's going against... Oh, Charlie wow. Blair. Rowdy Rondo, Dick Strike. Ah, favorite band. Wow. Our Lady Peace. Who? Our Lady Peace. It's like a Canadian band. Oh, no. <laughs> I dig it. I am the table. Yeah, someone said I am the table. I love it. <laughs> Sunny. We got to go back to that. It just, it just, it just, it just brings back good memories. Y'all know why. <laughs> I am the table. I love to hear it. Sonny, you know, woman is the head of the table. But you are the table. But what have you done around here? You don't deserve this. You don't deserve You both talk. Talk too much. Never shut up. I said, said you talk to all. Oh what happened to the music? Heavier kendo wait, back seemed to win for the moment. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. In this matchup. <laughs> and it might not even. Oh, the camera was just right there on her. Knock me off, Core. Uh. Would be the NXT universe that could push but onto what NBA volume, uh, street volume two was the truth. Oh, that's that's dope. Tony Khan's pro wrestling, dude, that's dope. Resident Evil Six is better than Elden Ring. Wow. Look at Sora. <laughs> Look at Sora. Oh my God, that's funny. Dude, Breath of the Wild. Oh, that's a bold choice. I'm a Sonic guy. Thinking about buying the submarine. What? And I talked to Breaker earlier today. He said he will have his father on his mind. You can see Braun wearing a singlet, the same singlet worn by his father, the Hall of Famer Rick Steiner, on the very first Monday Night Raw back in 1993. Wow, what a piece of history right there. No, like no, 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 liar! Liar. He's a liar. <laughs> that is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and let him lie to your face like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Jump the barricade just to say hi to Cody, man. Uh, 
fellow <laughs> Teach Bomber guy, and today I'm reading from Willie Regal's book. Some of my favourite wrestling memories are of being with Brian Pillman. Once you got used to his sense of humour, he was very funny. In 1995, the two of us were asked to go to Universal Studios in Hollywood to present a video game award on this live TV bash. The hosts were Leslie Nielsen and Jonathan Taylor Thomas, who played the kid in Home Improvement. The show was going out live on TBS after the channel's highest rated show, WCW Saturday Night, which went out from 6 till 8. We flew in on Friday afternoon for the dress rehearsal and found ourselves surrounded by all these lovey and darling types the sort of phony people I can't stand. We were due to do a skit which would have Leslie Nielsen at the podium at the front of the stage talking about violence in video games, while behind him would be me and Brian, dressed in our ring gear and playing a wrestling game on a big screen that would descend into the two of us brawling. Leslie was going to carry on deadpan, just like he did on Naked Gun and Police Squad, while we created all sorts of havoc behind him. The skit would end when Leslie drew a gun and fired it. That was the plan, anyway. When we got there, it soon became clear we were a tiny part of a big show. A producer flounced up and said, This is what we're gonna do, darlings. You and Brian will go on from there and do your fighting bit all over this set. The set was like the side of a mountain, all rock work with steps going up it. Okay, we said, we'll go here, here, and here, showing them what we were going to do. Brian was gonna do a crossbody dive onto me, and the producer thought it was all wonderful. Great, he said. That's about the time we'll bring on the juggling dwarves. My ears pricked up. Uh -oh. I had unpleasant dwarf memories. Dwarves? You've got dwarves? Yes, one of them juggles and rides a unicycle while the other one just juggles. They're gonna come on, run between your legs and kick you up the backside. I moaned internally. It got worse, too. At the side of the stage were two dickhead bodybuilders, all long hair and full of themselves. I thought they were part of some other segment, but no. It emerged they were to come over, pull Brian and me apart and throw us off the stage. Didn't like the sound of that. Brian, as ever, saw the opportunity to wind me up. Uh -oh. Hang on a minute, he told the producer. This show is only on because it follows our show, which gets the best ratings on this channel, so you can get some of its viewers to watch you. We're two of its stars, and you want these two nobodies to throw us off the stage? Brian had got the hook right into me. I wasn't as pleasant then as I am now. <laughs> I piped up, if those two wankers come anywhere near me, I'll fucking kill them. <laughs> that's... That's fooling him, Regal. <laughs> That's William Regal, right there. Prime William Regal. They looked terrified and shrank away. The producer looked concerned. They'll have to go to talk to their agent about this, he said. By now, Pillman had got me steaming mad and he was roaring with laughter. The upshot was we got rid of the bodybuilders, but the juggling dwarves would have to stay. Brian thought it would be funnier with them, so I went along with it, albeit reluctantly. We had to do the show the next day at 5pm West Coast time. As we went out and were introduced to all these dinner suits from the video game industry, you could tell the whole crowd had but a single thought. Who the hell are these two? We started pushing and shoving and fighting each other. The more we did, the more people laughed. And that wasn't the reaction we wanted. Pillman and I upped the stakes, knocking seven bells out of each other. I was chopping him red raw, and he was chopping me back so hard Bro. there was blood coming out of my chest. Bro, he's... they're actually going at it. They're, they're having a stiff wrestling match behind my guy. <laughs> That's crazy. We were kicking lumps out of each other in frustration, and all the audience could do was giggle. Did they not see how hard we were working? We were hitting each other as hard as we could. Afterwards, we realized they were right to giggle. It was supposed to be a comedy spot, but Brian and I had got it into our heads that they should have been ooing and aahing. Then it was time for the juggling dwarves. They ran between our legs. One went down on hands and knees behind me and Pillman shoved me over him. Then he picked up another dwarf and slammed him on top of me. I grabbed the dwarf and hoisted him, throwing him up into the wall at the back. It was horrible. All I wanted to do was crawl up my own backside and die. I kept pleading inside, please let this be over with. We had to go over and fight in front of Leslie Nielsen, who'd pull his gun and fire it, and then this fiasco would be over. We went to our places, he pulled his gun out, pulled the trigger, and... Nothing. Not a sound. He put the gun back in his holster and said, Bang, bang! Brian and I looked at each other, shrugged our shoulders, and walked off the stage. God, it was embarrassing. I jumped in the shower and was just cooling down when a very camp dancer minced in. He took one look at me and lisped, Ooh, isn't your chest red? Pillman thought it was the funniest thing ever. That was Brian, the king of the wind-up merchants. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and remember, never great. pay more than 20 bucks for a computer game. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was great. That, that was, that was... On three. Ready? One. Two. Three! That's high. It's, it's too high, isn't it, really? That's... That is... All right, going on three oh, just gives you too much time to think about it. Let's uh, go on one this time. Okay, ready? 
One. Just that spot is. I, I don't even know what to say. Get to Wayne. <laughs> oh! 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 I'm not gonna lie, I did enjoy their feud, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and uh, Adam Cole feud. That shit was fun. Oh no, the turbines again. I have to go. Wait, this next test does require some explanation. Let me give you the fast version. God damn! <laughs> There, if you have any questions, just remember what I said in slow motion. Oh, that was a lot to uh, set up. <laughs> oh, man. It has been said that anything can happen here in the WWE. But now more than ever, truer words have never been spoken. This is a conscious effort on our part to have your intelligence insulted in a more contemporary <laughs> manner. Even though we call ourselves sports entertainment because... What a ridiculous statement. The key word in that phrase is... Ridiculous. The WWE extends far beyond the strict confines of sports presentation into the wide open environment of bad entertainment. <laughs> we borrow from passe, daytime talk shows, and other same old simplistic forms of television entertainment, such as those on MTV. We in the WWE think that you, the audience, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we also think that you're definitely a cesspool of decay. Therefore, we've embarked upon the era of say your prayers and take my semen. However, Due to the live nature of Raw, Demon. we encourage some degree of parental <laughs> discretion as it relates to the younger audience allowed to stay up late. We are responsible television producers who work hard to bring you this outrageous, wacky, wonderful world known as the WWE. Through some 50 years, the WWE <laughs> has been an entertainment mainstay here in North America and all over the world. One of the reasons for that longevity is as the times have changed, we have the same old television So Shut your mouth, you rapist! <laughs> I'm happy to say that this direction <laughs> has resulted in a huge 40% decrease in television viewership, <laughs> for which we thank you, the simplistic audience, but most especially, we would like to thank biased and inaccurate media reports. Stand up for WWE. <laughs> <laughs> that, whole, that whole clip was great, bro. The way they cut up everything. Oh, that was fantastic. Botchamania, it always puts a smile on my face, always has me laughing. Episode 453 was fantastic, per usual. Comment down below, let me know what was your favorite part from this video. But I appreciate all the love and support on the channel. Road to 90K, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.